six hours of your ass, stuff like that. So I start tumbling around. And, and then that's the only reason you do it. You're fairly muscly. I thought you might be into a physical fitness. Well, not weightlifting. No? But I like to move around a lot. Do you prefer to work live uh, solo or live with the band, Modern Lovers? Oh, if I had, if I could have had the whole Modern Lovers here, they'd be here. Right. But uh, the funny thing is, solo works pretty good for TV. Like, if there was a big dance hall situation, then I'd definitely miss the band. But this works pretty good. Right. And when you... Uh, we're on a television show in Sydney the other morning. You wrote a song while you were there. How prolific are you? Do you write all day, every day, no. wherever you are? Or? No, if he hadn't uh, challenged me to make up a song before the show was over, I wouldn't have wouldn't made know. up a song that day. So you're not sort of a la Rod McEwen who goes around with a pen and paper and, and jots down things for verse and, and songs all the time? Sometimes I do. I got a notebook. I make up ideas. Yeah. But I, sometimes I'll, you know, I'll make up one song a month or something. What did you think of the Aussie audiences the other night when you worked in Sydney? I think they were confused a little. Do you think so? Yeah. I've heard good reports. Yeah, well, they might have liked me. I just think they were confused. Sometimes they were almost so quiet that I wondered uh, whether anyone was there. <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe the blend between yourself and John? Kind of like uh, Bozo the Clown <laughs> opening for John Paul Sartre. <laughs> We'll find out how you met John in just a moment. Okay. Will you do that song for us now? Sure. We have you. What, what's this one called? Let me see. Why don't we do Vincent Van Gogh? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, okay. well, why not, John? Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay. Okay, then I'm ready too. Well, have you heard about the painter Vincent Van Gogh? Who loved color and he let it show. And in the museum, what have we here? The baddest painter since ancient Jan Vermeer. See, he loved, he loved, he loved life so bad. His paintings had full twice the color that other paintings had. So bad, so bad that the world had to know. The man loved color and he let it show. So, what can we say about this Vincent van Gogh? He'd say, he loved color and he let it show. And in the museum, what have we here? The baddest little painter since Jan Vermeer. See, he loved, well, he loved life so bad. His paintings had full twice the color other paintings had. So bad, so bad that the world had to know. The man loved color and he let it show. Vincent Van Gogh, Vincent Van Gogh. Jonathan Richmond, thank you very, very much, mate. And you're on tonight at the Trade Union Club in Sydney. Yeah. We must give that a mention. Try and catch him. He did kill them the other night with John Cale. So John they're dead, Ka but you can still come. <laughs> right. <laughs> but John Cale and yourself are now sort of breaking up and you're going your way. And John, you're off to Brisbane, Melbourne, yes. Melbourne tonight. How did you first meet? Uh, it was a long time ago in California and uh, uh, strange circumstances. Please tell. Well, like, he, he was a, a, a fan of the underground for a long time and I, I, I was really embarrassed by that because it was, it was when I heard his music, I mean, it was, it's embarrassing to hear that somebody likes, likes another kind of music when they're talented themselves. Yeah. And uh, it was the kind of music that he was doing was exactly that fragile, weak sister kind of Right. <laughs> we might go into that a bit further tonight, I oh, think. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's move in. You met him as an A&R man, not... Uh, no, I knew him before. Oh, you since, knew him before yeah. that. But then, as an artist... It's very difficult person. to relate to him as an A&R man because it was a business situation and mm. uh, I, I felt more as a friend than, than as, a, as a someone who should be adjudicating his career. Right, so when it got to that stage, how were you then into that area, working with record companies, etc., after just, having been with Velvet Underground? It was something I wanted to do. I mean, it would, from being a, a, a sideman in the Velvet Underground to being a performing artist, to being a, an a and person, you learn a lot about the record industry from that position. And I, it, I did learn a lot in California. Well, you've gone on to produce a heck of a lot of people. Can you run through them? Well, Patti Smith and, and Diggy yeah. and... and yeah, and, and Chunky Noah and Ernie. Um, most of those people, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of what I'm proud of about those people and, and 
my involvement with Jonathan is that those there aren't any there aren't any other musicians like those around. Anymore. There aren't musicians like Patty around. There aren't mm. musicians like Jonathan, and there aren't very many like Iggy and the Stooges. Do you think that there will? And this may sound ridiculous, but let's ask it. Will there ever be a reformation of Velvet Underground to do a one-off tour? Or you something? never know. Possible. Possible. You little beauty.